Hello and welcome back. Here we shall see how to create a no collision script. So let's open the game first by going to cheat engine, selecting level 3. Alright, so this is the tutorial step 3 that comes with cheat engine. So we're now going to create a no collision script so that the player can walk through the enemy without getting harmed. As you can see now, it, when it tries to walk uh, to the enemy, it gets killed. So let's see. So we first have to find the location for where the X and Y coordinates of the player stop. So put the player on the left of the margin. And then we shall start doing some scans for memory addresses where the X and Y coordinates are found. So let's set up the scan the value type is float and the scan type is unknown initial value so click on first scan all right i forgot to attach to the game so just go to attach to the game select the game tutorial click open yes and click on first scan okay the settings sorry I should set unknown initial value as the first scan. Alright, so now we found 5 million hits. So now we move the player to the right and repeat. But this time we select increase value in next scan. And we reduce now to 90,000. So move the player to the right, new scan. Now we get 602. Move the player to the right, next scan. Now we get 164. Repeat the process again. And each time we repeat, we reduce the number of uh, addresses where the X coordinate is stored. Now we move player to the left and reverse the direction of the scan type to decrease value. Click next scan and now we are getting single address. So this is the location where the X coordinate is stored. Just give it a name, call it X. So we freeze it and try to move the player and we find that we cannot move. So that's just positive confirmation that this is indeed the X coordinate for the player X. And this is the address where the uh, X coordinate is stored in memory. Okay, so now we have to look at that region memory. So click, right click and select browse this memory region. And this is the region where at the bottom panel you see the location of the all the variables for this player so the coordinates are there somewhere x and y so now we search we set the display type to uh, uh, byte decimal byte and then we move the player to the right and then we see which one lights up now we expect the collision flag to be 0 and 1, so this is possibility. 0 changes to 1, meaning that it is a collision to happen. Look for a second one, move the player and you see all the changes sliding up and this is the second one where the, where the value changes from 0 to 1, indicating a boolean. So this is another possibility where the player uh, the collision is detected. Let's look for, see if there are any others. Alright, so we added two of it to the list so far. So now we try to change to one and see what happens. Alright, so this change to one sets the player to be invisible. But, although invisible, it is not, uh, it is still colliding. As you can see. Now for the second one, we, we can safely assume second one uh, will be the player dies. Alright, let's see. So the first one is, we can give it a name of invisible so that we know that this address stores the invisible uh, flag. The second one is a die flag. So when player dies, both set to 1. <coughs> Alright, so now we can freeze both values to 0 so that it never dies and then see what happens. See that? It, it actually dies but it respawns again very fast because cheat engine keeps uh, setting back the value to zero because we freeze the value, see that? But it's ugly to look at because even though it 
appears to be invincible, but still you can see all the uh, particle effects from the from the collage collision. So this is not what we are looking for. Collision is still happening here. What we want is to uh, to do assembly editing. So far now this is called memory editing. Memory editing is where we just directly tamper with the uh, with the value stored in the memory address in order to change the uh, behavior. But in order to make it uh, permanent, we have to go and look for the assembly. Find out what uh, what access this address, what writes to this address, and then here we will move the player and then see. Uh, these are the instructions in the code where uh, the value 1 is written to to the uh, address. So when 1 is written to address, it means the player has died. right? So we, we want to bypass that. So we have to look at the assembler. Click show us in this assembler. And we look at the assembly listing. And in here, we can see the code. Uh, the first line highlighted is uh, where uh, one is moved to a pointer variable to indicate that the player dies. So we need to find a way to bypass that. We look. We need to look for a jump, uh, a relevant jump above it that can bypass it. But to be sure that we can bypass it, we we will break here and trace. So click break and trace, and then click step over instead of single step. Maximum trace count increase to 10,000. Click OK. And then it will start uh, tracing the moment we collide with the enemy. So we collide the enemy now, and now it is started tracing. So it starts tracing uh, the color of the function where the player dies. Why we need to find the color so that we can find a way to bypass the logic that calls the die function. That's how we uh, hack the uh, uh, we can hack the code to avoid getting killed. So what we just did was to set a breakpoint on the line where the player dies and then put a breakpoint there and we will trigger a trace. This is called break and trace. So after that we deliberately walk into the enemy and that cause the code to hit the uh, breakpoint and once the breakpoint was hit uh, it triggered the trace so now it is tracing all the color of the function when the player dies it might take some time and uh, while it is doing the tracing the game is not responding as you can see the message uh, on the top here where the uh, it is not responding but just give it a few minutes and you should see the game coming back to life as the trace uh, completes. And you will see later that the trace is uh, very thorough, up to 10,000 traces, 10,000 instructions of lines. And it will show you the complete listing of the color of the function when the player dies. So now the game has come back to life, that means the trace is complete. So now you look at the result of the trace. What you can see here are the, you can see you can click on the collapse button there. When you click on the collapse button, it will show you all the pattern of what happens just before the code continues. So the, the player dies inside. Uh, okay, let me show you. Alright, this is where the player dies. And this is where the function where the player dies. We need to expand the, all the thing. You can click expand all and show. Alright, so it's nested and this is the line where the player dies. And this, this is contained in the function itself. And just above it will be the parent. And you can see there are many parents all nested up towards the left. This is the hierarchy of the parents. And the innermost core will be your function where the player dies. And if you click on that now, you can find this is the parent where the player died. And that is the after the call to kill the, kill the player. And you look up above and that is a call where the player dies. Okay, so that call happened uh, and then 
and inside the function there, as you can see, in this function, this is where the play dies, and when the, when the call returns, it, it comes to the knob 2 there. So that's how we know that uh, this is a parent. Alright, so now we have identified the parent. This is, this is a parent. Continues from here after the call to kill the to kill the player, and this is a call which is nested inside here. All right, and you can, you can expand the nest, and you can see the whole function. You can collapse the nest, and you see the call after the function is done. All right, so now we scroll a bit, you can see the call is here, and we can bypass it by this jump here. This is a jump equal, meaning that if the jump is equal to if the test above it is equal to zero, which is true, then it will jump. So that means if it jumps, it means that there is no collision. And that test AL, AL is to test whether AL is 0. So AL is 0 means there is no collision, so it jumps. So if there is collision, it won't jump. So we can convert this into a permanent jump. Let's try that now. Just space, space bar and then let's assemble a jump here. JMP, click OK to make it a permanent jump. And then we test our hypothesis. Walk into it and you can see Collision detected, but nothing happens because we are jumping over the the die function. See that? Okay, let's just turn it back now to JE because we want to make a script, so we restore it back to JE. So we are going to write a script here. Click on Tools, uh, Auto Assemble, a template. Select AOB Injection, Array of Byte Injection. Click OK, OK, and we are going to inject this script into the game process memory. So over here, we just need to change something. I will assign it to the to the table first, and then we just change the jump, and then now we can activate our script. All right. So now you see when the script is activated, it becomes invincible. You can teleport. The earlier script was returned to teleport, so now both are activated, and we can actually complete the game now. Just by using teleporting and invincibility script, we can com we can mark all the platform as green because the objective of the game is to mark all the platform as green by jumping on it. So we're using our two scripts now, we are able to do it. Right, if the teleport height is not, not right, you can turn on and off. Alright, there are two more red ones that need to jump on. So let's uh, see. Alright. So it's jumping not high enough. We can we can modify the script, the teleport script. Just double click and change the height to 0 0.1 to 1 sorry not 0 0.1 and now it will jump higher and see, see that and it is hit the last top left uh, platform now we go to the right platform turn off the script let it go down okay let's move it all right and now let's turn on the script let it go up too high so we can adjust the height Go to the script and adjust to negative 0.6 so that it doesn't jump so high. Alright, so now teleport. <coughs> Turn it off first, let it come down. And now let's step. It completed turning all to green. Now we can walk through to the door by make sure our invisibility no collision script is on and you walk through the door even though the enemy is there, blocking the path. Well done, so we have completed the challenge using our two scripts. Thank you for watching.